my name is Amber Case, and I'm here to tell you about cyborg anthropology because people have asked me this a lot, and uh, I have five minutes, and hopefully you'll understand. Basically, we're all cyborgs. All of you guys right here, you're watching me give a cyborg presentation. Yes, you're, you're watching me interface with this computer to interface with you. And now all of our techno-social interactions are between these computers and these humans, and, and we seem to really like it. I, I always wonder, like, how do you understand uh, this sort of thing? Well, he's a cyborg because he uses a tool, and every time you use a tool, it extends the capability of your hand to do something more than it could before. Or my contact lenses allow me to see better than uh, I could before, so that's excellent. So humans and technology, they co-create each other through this actor network of techno-social interaction. I use a phone and I log on to this actor network and suddenly I can hear really far all the way to Japan. And uh, that's great. Uh, speaking of Japan, uh, this, this is a... Um, Old robot seal, and you can pet it in a response to your touch. And they use these in, um, in uh, old folks' homes, and it's actually really great. Uh, it costs like maybe two thousand dollars, but I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, so uh, don't do this. Uh, your technology takes a lot of planning. Uh, you should always make sure you know where you're putting an interface, or else the interface can't interface with you interfacing with the interface. So, also, when you go into an elevator and you have to wait, that's the same interface. They have to be fast, comfortable, convenient, and comfortable without undue effort. So you shouldn't have to wait for things, you shouldn't have to click 200 times, and you shouldn't have to deal with this. Oh. <laughs> there's, there's actually a, a, a PDF manual somewhere buried in there that you can click on, and you can actually read a guide on how to use this interface. I don't even know where it came from. I, I think somebody compiled it. Anyway, uh, the world is getting smaller. Um, we used to be able to have to walk everywhere. Now we can just click and be transported. So it's, it's kind of nice. Uh, before that, there were airplanes. Uh, now, we, now we have this faster than light transport. It's, it's cool, you know, living in this area. So uh, convergence, everything's getting smaller. Now we can uh, tweet and Flickr and Facebook and Plurk and I, I can't remember any of the rest of them. But uh, they're, all, they're all compressed in these little devices. So, uh, <laughs> so, um, we don't really have privacy, you know. Um, you, you used to have your home office, or actually an office at work, and you'd have a cubicle and, and, and dividers. And now, if, I mean, how do you construct privacy in a public space? You're kind of sitting there in a coffee shop. And, uh, you know, you're wondering, like, what's your husband? You look up on Google Maps, I need to go to this other coffee shop and go, you know, what happens. So, uh, that's, that could be a problem. Um, I don't know how many people it's been a problem for, but, you know. Uh, so this is what the internet looks like, if wow. anyone wants to know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's a great place, there's nodes where everyone's coming together and be like, wow, that store is awesome, I'm totally going to dig it. And uh, other useless things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They tried to make it really nice. It, it obviously didn't work. Um, so definitely omit them. Use friendlier replacements. I think that. Uh, <laughs> something that, that was useful, that, that had a nice interface, that anything would be okay. Um, Wikipedia is another example. This is a serious example, so you all should be seriously uh, contemplating. Um, but yeah, using Wikipedia, you have one document, everyone edits it, there are flame wars over uh, editing certain articles, like hot dogs. Um, <laughs> This, this thing, not the steering wheel, but the thing below it, is what the personal computer was supposed to look like in 1994, or 2004, by the Rand Corporation. So, uh, right now we have a printer that looks like that, but Whoa. thankfully uh, that didn't happen. Uh, this is supposed to come out in a year, and, and it's a, a television screen, so it looks like there's a 50-foot screen out there. I think it's like 600 bucks. I, I don't know if anyone's going to use it. I think it'd be scary. Like, if she used it to walk down the street, it'd be awesome. But you know, <laughs> the general person who's walking down the street probably wouldn't work. So what's next? Well, we have new interfaces. Uh, one of these translates English to Latin or vice versa if you need that. Uh, the other one tells you it, what's going to kill you and you're in the food that you're going to eat. Wow. So uh, thanks. Come to Cyborg Camp. Uh, <laughs>